Hi, I'm Marius from MWS Photography and these are my two beautiful daughters. So here we've got Lumen, which is getting a tummy rub, so she's going to go to Sleepy Land very soon. And I've got Uchis here. And they are joining us for today's episode of Digital Photography Today, the show where, Uchis, tell them, you will learn how to become the master of your camera. Okay, so in today's episode, we are going to talk about HDR photography. Okay, so what is HDR photography? HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. Now, I'm sure you've taken a picture, and maybe quite a few, where you... Let's create a scenario. Maybe you've got a beautiful garden. You've got a bench uh, with beautiful grass, people sitting on the bench, but you've got maybe a wall from your house here. The, sh the, the sun <laughs> is shining, um, but it's shining on your fence here. So you've got a ton of sunlight on your beautiful wooden fence, but here where the people are sitting, you've got no, no sunlight. So it's very dark, it's in a shady area. Now, when you look at your picture or when you look at your scene that you've got in front of you, your eyes can pick up the detail on the grass, the people sitting on the bench, the detail on your wall, which is totally in the shade. It can see all the detail in the wooden fence you've got. Your eyes can see everything. They're the, the most best lenses you will ever own. So it's that your eyes have got a very huge dynamic range. It can see a lot of detail. Now you grab your camera and you say for your friends, smile, you take a picture. And then when you look at your screen, ugh, disappointment, because the picture looks terrible. The section where your friends are sitting or your family are sitting is completely underexposed. The section where the fence is might look okay-ish to overexposed because the camera is trying to figure out what it needs to do with this information because your eye's dynamic range is like this and your camera's dynamic range is like this. So it's not seeing all the information that your eyes can see. The moment it can't cope with the, with the shadow areas, it goes black. The moment it can't cope with the highlights it just burns them out and you've got white sections all over the picture okay so this is where HDR photography comes in so how can we solve this problem with HDR now with HDR you need to bracket on your camera it's called bracketing and then you take a bunch of pictures now depending on the camera you've got you can take for instance on the Canon power shot on my Nikon D7000 I can take three bracketed shots on the camera um, on the Fuji S5 Pro, this one can take nine bracketed images and, and it depends from camera to camera where the button is. For instance, this one, the, the bracketing button is here on the back. On the Nikon D7000, the bracketing button sits here. On the Canon PowerShot, it's in the menu. Every camera will have a different way of turning the bracketing function on. Now, I've got a nice episode I've already recorded for the bracketing function, so you can click this link and watch the bracketing episode to see exactly how to set it on your camera. Okay, so that's, uh, bracketing is, is crucial for this. You will need to use your bracketing, but it's really very easy. Okay, so what happens when you bracket an image? Now, f that image that I said looked ugh on your camera, that is your camera's best exposure. That's what the camera thinks is right. So let's continue using that example of people sitting on a bench here and your, and your fence, which has got sunlight on the people are sitting in the shade. The image that was spot on, this was maybe dark, this had light on it, maybe it was overexposed, depending on your lighting, what your camera did when it metered. Um, so that's the image that the camera says is right. Now, if you told the camera to, to take three pictures, to bracket three shots, it's gonna take that shot, it's gonna take a shot which is underexposed, it's gonna take a shot which is overexposed. Now, what happens when the camera takes, say, the overexposed image? The sections that had light on it, like your fence, will now overexpose, it will burn out. But the sections that were in the shade, you will now get the lighting here. It will make this brighter, so you will have the people sitting on the bench. Um, HDR for people is not always recommended, though. I don't like the way the colors are on the skin, so I'm just using this as an example what, hap what happens when you bracket. But it could be just a, a, a very nice bench as well, okay, that you just want to take a picture of your garden. Now, the shot that is underexposed, the section that was very dark will now just become pitch black, because you will now get the information that is in the brighter section. Now those beautiful colors will come out from the sun shining on that wooden fence. Maybe it's a nice varnished fence. That color will now come through because the image is underexposing. So now your camera has got this range of pictures. Or your, your, when you um, go to your software, 
your program has now got this entire range of exposure to work with. What the camera thought was right, the underexposed shot and the overexposed shot. Now when, for instance, um, if you look at this example I took on the Fuji S5 Pro, it was a, an older shoot I did um, for an Audi R8, you'll see I've got nine bracketed images. When you look at the shots, you'll see it goes all the way from totally black um, we, or very dark that we have nice detail on the car, on the lights, um, the lights uh, f of the of the parking area in this building. You can see detail in the lights, but the rest of the car is very underexposed. It doesn't look that good. But as you go all the way through this entire range of exposures and you get to the final shot, you'll see now the lights are totally blown out. But now we've got detail in the car. We've got detail on the car's lights. So we've got so much information to work with. Now, when we take all this information, and we put it into our HDR software, this is our end result. Now, if you compare this, let's look at what the camera could get. This was the camera's best shot. This is the exposure in the middle. Compare this to my HDR picture. Look at all the detail on the shot. You can go into detail on the lights, on the mags. It just looks awesome. Okay, so that's what's, what HDR can do for you. Okay, so how do we set up this? How do we get on this on the on the camera side because this episode we only focus on setting the camera up properly to get the best shot in the episode straight off this we're going to talk about processing we're going to um, uh, do the following two pictures I'm going to show you how I'm editing this um, to get it to look this good so how do we get our camera set up properly the first first thing you're going to need is your tripod now the reason you're going to need a tripod is for two reasons. Sometimes your exposures are going to be very, very lengthy. Um, I've done HDRs where my exposures were 20, 30 seconds. Um, so you cannot handhold the camera. So you are going to need a tripod. And then also, maybe you're shooting an HDR in the middle of the day. You can shoot one without a tripod. If your shutter speeds are fast enough, you can take the shots directly on the camera, just press it down, go click, 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 and take your free shots. The problem you're going to have is, all the movements you're making when you're taking that shot, even the smallest movements, the HDR software will have to figure out by stretching the pictures and moving them around to fit them on top of each other to get them to work properly. Now the problem is if you moved around a lot, the program will have to crop sections of the picture away. You're going to lose sections of your picture because you did not use a tripod. So when I'm doing HDR, I always use a tripod. I don't think I've ever done an HDR where I did not use one. I think I've always used tripods for HDR. Then a very important thing, and this is for photography in general, not just for HDR. When you put your camera on a tripod and you've got an image stabilized lens, turn the image stabilizer off unless you know that your camera or your lens is happy with having the camera on a tripod when the image stabilize, stabilize is turned on. Um, for instance, um, I've noticed when I do have it on accidentally, the moment I zoom into the picture, I can see, oh, this doesn't look good. I've got these like jittery lines on my picture because the image stabilizer um, on the lens is trying to stabilize something, but there's nothing to stabilize. So it's actually making it worse. So usually 99% of the time when I put the camera on my tripod, I'll already flick the switch of the image stabilizer to off. Some cameras do allow you to have it on, so you can read up on your camera and see if your camera does support that. But otherwise, just turn the image stabilizer off. You'll notice your images look better. So when I'm doing my HDR, HDRs, I turn the image stabilizer off, put the camera on a tripod, and then when you take the picture, um, two things you can do, because like I said, your exposure sometime, sometimes are very lengthy. Use a cable release. So you, when you use a cable release, you can just take the button, hold it in, and goes click, click, click. It takes your three shots for you. And um, yeah, you know you're not touching the camera. But sometimes I'm only doing one quick HDR. Um, then going through my camera bag to search for cable release, by the time I'm getting it plugged in into my camera, like for instance, this Fuji S5 terrible mounting here, you have to screw it open, plug it in, screw the cable release on. Uh, I'll just turn the just turn the self timer on it. It's a lot quicker. Um, so use your self timer. Turn it to two seconds. The camera's going to go tit 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 click tit 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 click tit 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 click and boom, you've got your three bracketed images. Okay, so when we get to the camera settings, this is where it gets really, really very important. I've got something in my eye here. Um, when you set your camera, there are a few things which you should do to make sure your pictures look good first thing is your ISO 
Now you'll notice when you start to do HDR photography, you do get extra noise. And that's just the software that's really pushing this image to its limits to get as much information from the image as possible. So to make sure you don't get excessive extra noise in there, don't shoot with a high ISO. Usually I shoot ISO 100 on all the shots I take and you still get some extra noise that was not on your original shots when the HDR software starts to put everything together. So shoot as low as possible. If you do need to increase it, just don't go too high because it will create extra noise in your shot. Then, um, very important is which mode to shoot in. This can really make or break your picture. Um, for instance, if you shoot in shutter priority mode, what will happen is you set a, a set shutter speed. So maybe you chose a hundredth of a second. Now the camera is going to make the, the uh, aperture smaller and larger as it needs to allow more or less light in to get your underexposed and, over, uh, underexposed and overexposed images. What will that do when those aperture numbers change? they are going to change your depth of field, which means your three images will have different depth of fields. Especially if you take something that's maybe very close up where depth of field really becomes a, a crucial um, thing that you can actually see the difference in the depth of field, then that image is not going to work. So the best mode to shoot your HDRs in is using aperture priority. So that'll be A on your camera or AV. So then you set the aperture, you set the depth of field. Then you can just use your focus point choose the focus point, choose your depth of field, and the camera will then shoot every image with the same depth of field, but it will change your exposure by changing your shutter speed. Now that is what you want. You want to have an image that is darker, brighter, and what the camera thinks is right. So changing the shutter speed is perfectly fine. Just keep the aperture constant. You know your images will be the same. Then you know if you've got your camera on a, on a tripod, you've turned the image stabilizer off, you're using self timer or you're using your cable release then you know firing your shot you'll get the best results keep the iso as low as possible turn your camera to aperture priority choose the the depth of field you would like being very shallow or very deep so for instance maybe you've got a landscape a very deep depth of field and then just turn your bracketing on and once you can do that i think i gave the bracketing link that you need to watch anyway here it is again uh, if you haven't watched the bracketing video you need to watch this click on the link watch the bracketing video you'll need to know how to set your bracketing and also if you're not that clued up yet with your aperture also watch this video it's very important that you that you learn how to properly use your aperture setting then you will have no problems shooting your hdr pictures then you just choose the aperture you want choose your focus point turn the bracketing on, choose how many um, frames it needs to bracket and also if it must be one stop or two stops or three stops apart depending on the effect you're going for, how much information you need and then you just click away. You've got your HDR image. It's that simple. Okay, as you can see Lumen is fast asleep here. Um, so in the next episode we are going to talk about the processing side. Now this is also very important because a lot of uh, everyone has got a different way of processing their HDR pictures. There are tons of software. You can do it in Photoshop. You can do it in Photomatics. There are. Uh, when I just googled HDR software, I got links that said top 20 HDR, top 10 HDR software. So there are so many applications out there. But I'm when I, I'm, I think the word is set in my ways. When I find something that works. I use it and I continue using it until something better comes along or I'll just continue using it. Now for the past few years, all the HDRs I've done have been on Photomatics and then on Photoshop. So if you're using different software, the end result will be the same. You still need to take these bracketed images. So what you learned in today's video is crucial. It's your foundation for taking the best shots. And then when we get to the software side, you can decide if my method works for you or if you want to use some other free software online because obviously now Photomatics is a paid product. Um, so that'll be in the next episode. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode and you've learned cool stuff about bracketing and, and, and aperture and setting up your camera for HDR, then what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button and get these episodes as they come out. Otherwise, I'm going to tell Lumen about this and she won't be a very happy girl. Oh, in this case, it's just a very sleepy girl. And then um, I'll see you in the next episode when we do the software side. So that's all from our side. Uchis is somewhere. And then bye.